Hi guys, so this video is about factoring trinomials, specifically using the trial and error method, which I believe is the best method out of all of them because it's the quickest and when you do larger kinds of problems and factoring trinomials is a small piece of that, trial and error is the fastest, most efficient. Before you guys go ahead and attempt trial and error, I want to make sure that you're very good with your multiplication tables. Multiplication tables and adding and subtracting integers. You have to be really good with playing with numbers. Okay, so if, if that's something that we're lacking, I would suggest to go grab some flashcards and just, you know, practice it. Okay, it happens. So, before we know or we learn how to factor trinomials, we have to know the FOIL method because the trial and error method basically comes from knowledge of FOIL. I want to call it a backwards FOIL. So, if we recall, we'll just remind ourselves how to FOIL. Let's just, here's a random example. When you're FOILing, you're multiplying two binomials, right? Two polynomials with two terms. One, two, one, two. So this is a situation where you would FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. So F stands for first. Multiply the first two terms. X times X is X squared. Outer, multiply the two outer terms, minus 4x. Inner, multiply the two inner terms, plus 5x. And last, multiply the two last terms, negative 20. And so if you guys realize, the outer and inner portion combines to give me this middle term, in this case, positive x. The first part of FOIL stays, and the last part of FOIL stays, to create this trinomial, three terms. So the x squared comes from first, part of FOIL, multiplying the first two pieces, and this last part of my trinomial comes from the last part of FOIL, multiplying the last two numbers. The middle term comes from the outer and the inner, um, the outer and the inner part of FOIL combining, okay? Now this video is going to be specific to uh, trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c, okay? So I'm doing very basic cases where the coefficient the number in front of x squared is just 1, so they're a little bit easier. But the same concept is going to apply for the rest of the cases, which I'll do another video separately from this, where we have a coefficient in front of that other than 1. So if we can get this down, we can get those down. So what am I doing? Factoring. Factoring my trinomials. Factoring is going from the trinomial into what I call the bubbles. I want to create the two things that are going to multiply to give me that trinomial. So what two binomials multiply to give me that trinomial? So remember that the first part of the trinomial comes from the first part of FOIL. The last part of the trinomial comes from the last part of FOIL. And basically, the middle term comes from the outer and the inner combining. Okay, so now I'm going in the opposite direction, factoring. So what am I going to do? Well, if I know the first two terms have to multiply to give me x squared, create factors of x squared. Well, x times x, right? If I know that the last part of FOIL, right, is the product of these, giving me this term, then I have to pick factors of negative 20. Okay, so factors of negative 20. There's 10 and 2, 5 and 4. 20 and 1, you have a bunch of different combinations. So to determine which ones you're going to use, 5 and 4, oops, 10 and 2, 20 and 1, you want to think about the situation that's going to combine your outer and inner part of FOIL to give you positive 1. So sometimes I say, you know, place numbers there. For example, if I put a 10 and a 2, my outer is going to give me 2x, my inner is going to give me 10x, there's no way that these will combine and give me 1x. So if this one's wrong, I start over. Trial and error is exactly what it sounds like. Try something, if it doesn't work, try something else. So which one is gonna work? Well, obviously the five and the four, we just did it here. Five, four. How is it gonna work? My signs are very important. I need the last two terms to multiply and give me negative 20, which means that somebody's negative and somebody's positive. If they have to combine to give me positive, I'm going to make the 5 positive and the 4 negative. Here's my quick check. x times x is x squared. Positive 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Outer is negative 4x. 
inner is positive 5x, which will combine to give me positive 1x, and therefore, this guy's factored properly. Okay? Trial and error method. All right, so let's just pick a random example again. We're going to factor this guy. x squared minus 2x minus 63. Factor the following trinomial. Give me the bubbles. Okay, what two factors, what two binomials multiply to give me this? Backwards FOIL. Well, I know that this times this has to be x squared. So obviously I'm going to place an x and an x. I know that this times this has to give me negative 63. Signs matter. So give me factors of 63. 7 and 9, right? 7 and 9 sound good because I can get a negative 2 from that. If the 9 is negative and the 7 is positive. Quick check, right? x times x is x squared. Negative 9 times positive 7 is negative 63. My outer is 7x. My inner is negative 9x, which will combine to give me negative 2x, which is what I want. Boom. This guy's factored. Okay? I want to get used to, you know, maybe also checking without writing it out. x times x is x squared. Negative 9 times 7 is negative 63. Outer. Positive 7, inner. Negative 9 adds to give me negative 2. This is why I said you want to be really good with your multiplication tables and your combination of numbers, because you're playing with numbers, which is always a good time. But you have to be good with your multiplication tables. Otherwise, this becomes a lot more difficult. Now, <clears throat> um, let's do another example. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, again, signs are important. Factor the trinomial. Give me the bubbles. What two binomials will multiply to give me this trinomial? So again, comes from FOIL. Backwards FOIL. This guy times this guy has to be x squared. x and x. This guy that times this guy has to be 6. Well, I have multiple factors of 6. 6 and 1, 2 and 3. We want to make sure that my outer and my inner is going to combine to give me 5. Well, either one of these could give me 5 depending on the signs. Being that these have to multiply to give me positive 6, then that means that they're both positive or both negative. Well, what do you think? Well, I would imagine both positive because when I combine, I want a positive case here. Positive 2, positive 3. Quick check, right? x times x is x squared. 2 times 3, positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. And outer is positive 3 plus inner, which is positive 2, giving me positive 5. Boom. Done. Initially, if you have to multiply it out, you know, to check it, that's fine. Just get used to doing it in your head as well, but with practice. What's going to change if I do this? I changed one sign. All the numbers are the same except for this guy. It's negative instead of positive. Does it change my factoring? Of course. One sign makes a very big difference. It can go from factorable to even non-factorable. Or maybe a different choice in my factors that I choose. Again, an x and an x, right? That part's easy. But now I want a negative 6. Somebody's positive, somebody's negative. I want to create a positive 5 with my combination of my outer and inner. So I'm going to choose 6 and 1. Who's going to be positive and who's going to be negative? Well, if I do a positive 6 and a negative 1, what happens? x times x is x squared. Positive 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. And my outer, negative 1, plus 6, giving me 5x. Boom. Done. So look at the difference between these two factored cases. And all that I changed was one sign. So you need to double check your signs. Be careful with your signs. They make a big difference. Okay. Here's another one. One more. 
x squared minus 7x plus 10. I want to factor it. Give me my bubbles. Call them the bubbles. Obviously, we're doing x and x, right? That part's not bad. Now I'm thinking factors of 10 that combine to give me this negative 7. 10 and 1, 5 and 2. What do you think? Remember my signs. These two have to multiply to give me positive 10. So either they're both negative or both positive. Well, if I choose 10 and 1, I'm not going to get 7 anyway. So 5 and 2. Let's try that. 5 and a 2. Would they both be positive or both be negative? Well, if my middle term has to be negative, then my outer and my inner have to combine to give me a negative number, which would imply that they both should be negative. Quick check. x times x is x squared. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. My outer is negative 2x. My inner, negative 5x. Negative 2x plus negative 5x gives me negative 7x. Boom. Let's see what happens if I change one sign. x squared minus 7x minus 10. Give me my bubbles. Does it change my factoring? It should change my factoring because now I want a negative 10. Well, that means that somebody's positive and somebody's negative. These are the only factors of 10, 10 and 1 and 5 and 2. So if I put a 10 here and a 1 here, I'm going to get either 11 or a 9, positive or negative. That's not going to give me 7. This is out. What is my other combination? A 5 and a 2. Well, yeah, if both of them are negative or both of them are positive, they'll combine to give me 7, but I need my 10 to be negative. So even if I went like this, is this correct? Well, negative 5 times negative 2 is not negative 10. It's positive 10. One of these has to be positive and one of these has to be negative. Well, regardless of what I do, if this is positive, I get negative 2x plus a 5x. That's not 7x, negative 7x. Or let's say that I make my 5 negative and my 2 positive. My outer is going to give me 2x. My inner is going to give me negative 5x. This is a negative 3x. This is not what I want. No matter what I do, it's not working. So what happens? I tried every single factor of 10 combined in every single way to create a negative 10. But none of those combinations created negative 7. What does that mean? That means that this guy is not factorable or we say that it's prime. Right? What does prime mean? Only one in itself go into it. So only one times itself will basically be a factor of it. So what happened? One sign changed the whole thing from being factorable to non-factorable or prime. So you want to pay attention to your signs. You start again by these two values have to multiply to give me this. These two values have to multiply to give me this. And my outer and my inner have to combine to give me this. Same concept when we do the next video, when we make it a little bit more difficult, where instead of a 1 in front of x squared, we get other numbers. Okay? So again, help me, professorj.com or at gmail.com. You guys can check out my website, email me. This is a com, guys. Comment on the bottom. Let me know if you need more examples. Let me know if you need another um, view of it. There are other methods of factoring, but this is the quickest. Again, make sure that you're good with your multiplication tables. All right, till next time.